A very good morning, everyone. Um, we are just waiting for a couple of minutes for other people to join in, and then we'll start. Thank you. Great. So let's start. Um, I think we've given uh, like five minutes for people to join, and we've got um, almost all the audience. Um, let me start with the introductions first. Uh, my name is Arpan Makwana, and um, I'm working as Senior Vice President with uh, Evosis heading the innovation practice um, as, as you know, I've been working with Evosis since last uh, 11 years. And uh, you know, as a part of innovation, we we work with a lot of different cutting edge technologies, including digital assistant, then, you know, RPAs, similarly, machine learning and artificial intelligence, um, advanced analytics. So these are different solutions uh, that I head for Evosis. Um, I've also got uh, Nelson with me and uh, Mitesh with me. Uh, Nelson, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, thanks, uh, Apan. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Nelson. I'm part of the Oracle uh, regional team for application development, uh, business development for the, the uh, cloud. And very glad to join the session with Evosis and looking forward to share more uh, exciting information with you. Pass it back to you, Apan. Thank you. We've also got Mitesh uh, with us on the call. And um, uh, Mitesh is working as uh, the regional manager for the innovation practice here with me. So uh, Oracle, along with Evosis and Tech Data, have uh, come, along, got to come together to do this webinar today. And uh, we've done a lot of implementations together with um, you know happy customers, successful uh, kind of um, implementations across uh, different geographies. So we are here to talk about uh, you know the solution uh, on digital assistant and uh, artificial intelligence that helps organizations to do digital transformation within their organization and also help the uh, end users in terms of customers as well as employees to get the most out of these kind of implementations so that their day-to-day -day activities or their routine tasks are simplified and they can devote more time to their uh, value adding services can we go to the next slide please so um, let me introduce evosis very quickly so we are a global organization uh, we've got uh, more than 1000 cloud customers as of now across the globe and uh, we implement all oracle solutions which include not only uh, the solution we are, which we are going to talk today but also you know erp side in terms of finance supply chain hr modules similarly uh, planning and budgeting and epm modules um, business intelligence and we also help organizations to migrate to the cloud infrastructure so these are all different solutions that we provide as as a part of our implementation services and um, interestingly as and when we started implementing um, through a lot of different customers we created specific verticals so if you can see here we've got industry expertise which includes uh, public sector healthcare uh, retail higher education you know uh, bfsi in terms of financial institutes and uh, so on uh, so we've got a lot of different verticals which help us to implement these solutions in the right way and also deliver the right, right value to our clients um, coming on to the other area so we we tie back our innovative solutions with the business so that the business can get the most out of these kind of implementations. So I'm going to talk about uh, these innovative solutions in the next slide. Uh, what I would also say is, uh, you know, looking at the number of consultants that we've got on board, which is more than 1500 as on date, uh, these type of consultants help us to uh, not only implement the solutions, uh, from a technical perspective, but also get a lot of value add to the customer from the consulting side. So this has got us a lot of um, fame internally within Oracle framework, as well as globally as a part of the uh, you know end users group. So we have got awards wherein the end users have voted for us and EOSIS was selected as partner of the year across the globe. So this, we've got a lot of different uh, types of awards on our hand which help us and also motivate us to do better year on year for our customers and get more and more innovative technologies to simplify the business environment. Next, please. So these are all our locations in terms of our uh, 
you know, consultant. So we started off uh, very small from a couple of countries. And as of now, we are more than uh, present in more than 30 countries. And we've got more than 13 regional offices across the globe, which, um, which includes a lot of uh, countries in Asia Pacific, uh, Australia, New Zealand, similarly in, in um, India. And then you talk about Middle East, you talk about Europe and US. So we've, we've done a lot of work in these different um, countries. So the good thing here is uh, this helps us to get not only global exposure, but also build our solutions as per the best practices in the uh, in the market so we can get a lot of best practices saying that you know different types of customers have implemented these solutions across the globe so how can we get the best out of all of these implementations and drive the implementation for our uh, for our customers you know upcoming customers so this this has helped us to uh, standardize our solutions in terms of implementing the best practices and also deliver the right value to our customers the next please so these are about the innovative technologies as um, i'll go uh, from digital assistance which is the extreme top left so digital assistant is basically advanced uh, chatbots i would say which have a lot of machine learning as well as ai components embedded within it so we are going to talk about much detail on digital assistant apart from that we've got robotic process automation which is rpa which helps us to automate all our you know mundane activities all our repetitive tasks on a day-to-day -day basis so that people don't get occupied with monotonous and boring kind of uh, you know jobs we can utilize our staff or people to do much more value adding activities so that's where we implement rpa for our customers Apart from that, we also implement artificial intelligence and machine learning, which are very, very specific solutions to each vertical. For example, if you talk about um, higher education, then we can say, how do we predict the number of students that we will have? Or how do we um, you know, predict what kind of course uh, will be required and what is the market driving as on today in terms of sentiment analysis? Similarly, how can we make sure that our budgets or financial numbers are in line with the expectations um, in terms of the number of students? Uh, how can we generate optimum revenue? Similarly, on the financial side, how can we reduce fraud? How can we reduce the bad debts um, in terms of you know, bad assets? How can we get uh, you know, better customers in terms of the market share? So these are very, very specific solutions uh, by vertical that use the existing data. And we also use the data which is publicly available on um, you know, public documents. Sorry, uh, is someone speaking? OK, so we, we get this kind of uh, you know, information to do AI and machine learning kind of predictions. Uh, then we talk about uh, an analytics and autonomous data warehouse. So a lot of organizations are still running on a very primitive old data warehouse, which needs a lot of maintenance and management. So we, we've come up with uh, solutions wherein we can implement autonomous data warehouse, which is self repairing and self sustaining a database, which uh, does not require a continuous maintenance or management. It can manage itself. And this is this has been a game changer in in a lot of organizations. Apart from that, the other three. Um, so we talked about digital assistant. Cloud infrastructure is wherein we can help organizations to move all their on-premise workload to the cloud infrastructure. So moving the same applications onto the Oracle cloud infrastructure so that you don't have to manage and maintain your own data centers or invest in hardware. So it's a straightforward uh, offering. Uh, last is IoT in terms of, um, you know, how do you predict the, num you know, real time updates in terms of your the health of your workers, health of your assets. How can you do predictive maintenance of your um, or preventive maintenance of your assets or machinery to reduce the downtime? Similarly, how can you monitor your fleet in terms of your vehicles uh, moving around the city and outside? So these are different solutions that help us to you know, get real time information from assets and people. And um, IoT has again changed the way we look at preventive maintenance in manufacturing as well as in um, other types of verticals. So these are different cutting edge solutions that we provide apart from standard 
ERP implementations. Can we go next, please? So uh, I will uh, better hand over this to Nelson. Nelson, can you uh, come in, please? Uh, okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, excellent. Okay, thanks, um, Abhan. Then, uh, yeah, so uh, this is uh, Nelson again, and uh, really appreciate Abhan. And I think Abhan, you, you put a lot of very exciting terminologies and also technologies, as well as I think it's giving us a very good foundation to like go, going forward to talk about the, the innovation with the uh, uh, digital assistant as well as the artificial intelligence. So allow me to pick over from here. And I, I think uh, Afan also share a lot of exciting, like uh, innovation scenarios that he just covered uh, from Infosys, uh, professional services, as well as the expertise around the world. And there's a lot of, uh, not only the um, the digital assistant, but also a lot of like a, like a theology behind the scene, like IoT and also AI. So um, I think this is very like a common starting page that everyone probably you, you attend most of the web webcast so this is something that we keep talking right new launch new launch today and new launch tomorrow and I think it's exactly the same for like uh, different industries I know in the call we have uh, people from different industry from education from banking from insurance uh, and allow me to pick uh, education what is one of example here and uh, like even us right today if we have like um, back to two years back probably we see face to face with each other presenting this presentation to you but now everyone going over the webcast uh, and 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 also this is not only for us but for all our people around us like students like um, employees staff and and you know this is uh, like uh, one of the new biggest uh, norms that we are seeing but you know this is getting to be very, very like um, send away to communicate for communication, uh, not only for the webcast, but we, we probably to need to in some way that we can like uh, assessing our information much better, much faster. So and also we're seeing quite a lot of like software like capabilities and there's a lot of research around like people investing more and more on communication, more and more on automation, more and more on the innovation so that we can get connected much easier uh, and this is also a new range that we are doing our business as well as delivering our training like talking to the business people as well as to to our, our partners and um, but unfortunately this is also a new new home okay so because the business I know some business is doing pretty good and and uh, but at the same time we also have some business like going downside because of uh, the change of the the, the the environment and sort of situation. So the IT budget is again like getting like uh, some restrict restriction on like uh, looking into how we can spend the money for like IT uh, capex versus opex. So people looking more more opex now so that we can like um, building up some of the initiative uh, without a lot of investment and need it to be fast. And innovation is talking about speed and also we cannot. So it's just wait for two, three years to see the result. We need to see the result as, as soon as we can as ordered by the sea level. So this is something that we are seeing right now. And and with that, uh, we, we also look into like um like some of the industry like education that uh, we are seeing uh, a lot of research around like uh, what are the priorities and, and education is, is also a kind of like um, the business that we are driving for like education, educating and so delivering some of the training online, delivering training right now, some some school open up and they, they, they allow people coming in. But but for overseas is getting tougher, right? People cannot fly into the UD to, to the campus. How do we deliver the the information? How do we deliver the courses and also let them as uh, interacting with us easier? And this is the Edgewood case research 2020, uh, talking about like digital way to integrating systems and uh, experience is one of the one of the pain points that we have right now. How how we can get them learning or how do we can get them interacting with us much easier? And it's not only for education but also applying for the customer that we might be the banking is having. Uh, the people cannot go to the branch office. They probably to have a digital way to interacting with our service center and and, and here we, we we want to share with you some 
idea how we can use uh, like digital assistant to like deliver that kind of like innovation as well as accelerating the transformation. And but before we jump into that, uh, Apan has talked about like digital assistant and allow me to like explain a little bit more with uh, two slides. Um, when we talk about digital assistant, it's definitely it's a like interface that we are uh, we don't want people to like install or, or, or need to have a lot of like like support so that they can get on board. So we need to be like providing a very easy way for people to to like just a, like a speaking to the, the the robot, right? This is some UI that we are building up uh, so that we can have easier for people to assess. And this should be the invite square so that it's, it's guaranteed the security, it guarantees the, the availability of the, the services for, for everyone. And it's scalable just in case there's an event coming up, people just jump into the, uh, the, the chatbot and asking questions. Uh, you don't want that to be failed and you don't want that to be stopped because you want to have as many as people getting involved. Uh, we are seeing some like a uh, spike of those chatbots for some events like promotion, marketing campaign, or the other side of it is the service downtime touch wood. Uh, but, but still you want to have like very friendly interface for people to get access to the information that you want to deliver. And and Oracle Digital System is a platform that you can like build, develop without a lot of coding. Uh, and then you can host it like on the fly within the same web UI. You don't need to install anything that you can build and also hosting the digital system so that you can interfacing with your user and also connecting them back to the backend application, uh, be it uh, ERP, be it like campus solution, be it like library system, be it like, um, like uh, the banking system. So this is something that we are like interfacing between the users and and the backend system without a lot of need to learning. So, and also another highlight for this is uh, we are looking into the some of the like Features from digital assistant, including like conversational AI. When you when you are interacting with the chatbot, you don't need to learn the, how about you use the menu. You don't need to know, learn about how about you um, uh, like uh, clicking the buttons. It's more about conversation. You can talk to the chatbot uh, in a in a in a natural language process uh, in a natural language uh, way. Uh, say hello, how are you? I want to like uh, like uh, check the op opening hours. Uh, if there's any incident, then you can use the same language. Like, I have some problems, so can you help me? So this is a very natural way to interacting with the chatbot, which it will be supported by AI. It will take up the length, the, the the conversation, and then understand what you're trying to ask, and extract the content so that it can serving you much better. Uh, how many days uh, leave I have? So I will, I will extract the days and leave, and then talk to the HR system and extract your leaf record and showing you the, the leaf information. And this is how it works. And it, we can also support voice so that you can integrate it with um, the web. So uh, in, in our web UI, you can also click on the button and speak to the chatbot over the browsers. And you can integrate it with the uh, common, like a, like a voice input devices like Google, like Siri, uh, or Alexa. And it definitely should support multilingual because you are serving not only your own country but also the people outside so you need to speak like english you need to speak like chinese or, or hindi so this is all the like uh, capabilities of the chatbot and you want to deliver this as a multi-channel so that you can plug the chatbot to your website easily uh, without changing the portal and you can plug it into the uh, common like uh, social media application like wechat whatsapp slack teams uh, even SMS, so we, we are seeing a lot of different people like starting from one channel, expanding to more and more channels to, to serve the customer or employees or students better. And again, this is easy to deploy local. And the important part of it is uh, you want to look into how people talk to you. So you can you need to get some insight, you can need to get some analytics so that you can understand better uh, and also like train up the chatbot better. So I keep telling people that uh, chatbot is it's just a baby, right? So you, you keep talking, then you, you, you understand how people ask questions, then you can, again, learning better and answer them next time better. So so we need to have a insight and it takes two so that you can like put it, this a, a learning cycle for the chatbot to learn better and better. Of course, we can start with some like like basic to, to, to enable the, 
the the chatbot so that you can like answer some question in the day one. But again, people keep asking questions differently, right? So you can log, learn in, 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 in day one. So you, you probably even have a way to like learn it better in, in on the on the journey. So this is something that uh digital assistant in the two slide uh page and giving you some like view on what we are doing in, in, in Asia. So we have been like seeing a lot of like, success uh, with different industry, uh, the universities, we have a few university pro chatbot for students that I will jump, I will, I will, I will go down into more details later on. Uh, we also seeing like um, e-commerce, like using chatbot to introduce their products. We are seeing bank using it for like customer services. So in introducing a new product over the web, and some bank over even going deeper to uh, allow the, the users to log in, uh, of course, with strong security, strong authentication. And then we validate the user and then like, they can also check balance doing some simple thing over the chatbot. Uh, and also we are seeing some big deployment like uh, PLDT, which is our customer reference, which they are serving like the millions of users over Facebook. Uh, and they're interconnecting with the CRM. In the past, so the most of the uh, like uh, service support will going through the um, the phone, and then they call the, the people who are answering phone and sitting and waiting for the call. And and, and in fact, they, they they are very busy. They are busy that they don't have enough time for going to the washroom. <laughs> That's what I was told. But 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 now with the chatbot, the chatbot will will, will overlay the, uh, the the human agent and helping to answer some of the common question uh, and providing some advice, providing the bill checking providing the uh, service support uh, until that the chatbot cannot handle, they can hand over back to um, the, the human agent to serve and uh, better. So this is something that um, we've seen quite a lot of like, success in chatbot and customer services and integrating integrating with the backend system as well, depending on the use case. And, and this is something that uh, I think is very, very exciting to see more and more customers getting bought. And also came out is one of our reference cases that they're using chatbot to to sell their their product online, and they're using chatbot with the augmented reality AR so that they they, they can pick the furniture and then they can use the to, to talk to the chatbot and recommend it, the furniture, and when they really like this chair or really, really like this table, they can use this uh, and demo uh, and show it in the AR and they can put it in uh, show it in their their own home and see how this fit into their the house and furniture colors and all these things before they purchase. And uh, interestingly, this marketing campaign has been a big success uh, that they have been sold out some of the furnitures in, in one week. So it's very, very um, powerful tools that uh, starting from conversation, bring in more technology as Apan mentioned, uh, AR, AI, IoT all together and provide a better service to, to the end users. And allow me to jump into a um, scenario for campus. And it is applicable for campus as well as employees and parents like um, uh, customers because it's a journey, right? It's journey meaning like you start engaging and then you 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 connect with them and then you engage with, engage with them, empower them to do more things and be your advocate. This is a, a generic customer journey or we put it in a student perspective. Uh, we are seeing we want to connect with the, the, the students uh, let them to uh, like uh, discover what kind of like services you, you are offering or or the uh, education course that uh, you are providing, and then engage with them and let them register as a like potential student. And when they get on board, they continue to engage with you and getting more like campus solution information, uh, cam like campus services, and then you empower them to learn, right? You empower them to like uh, learn better. Uh, ask question over like chat for the course information like uh, some Q and A, and then they will become your like advocates and provide provide you like alumni right. So you it will be it won't be an end journey because it will continue education for the UD that providing for professional people as well. So this is kind of the journey that we want to put and part some of the reference that we have. Um, so we connect with the student, we connect the people. Uh, we, they, when they start engaging you, uh, so like this university in, in, in Australia, University of Adelaide, uh, they're having their digital assistant in the website. Uh, as normal, right? people want to engage with you, want to understand better your service, and the digital assistant will pop up and ask, what can I help? And and this is kind of like more like welcoming way to like providing the, like, the services to the people and people can start 
like asking question Q and A, uh, and also like providing some pointers. So you know now people get very busy uh, website because of so many information, but you have the chatbot to start navigating them around uh, rather than they browsing through the, the the website like like hundred pages. So probably you won't have the chatbot to let them just navigate by conversation. So I want to find out more details about the engineering course. Is it available for like people from Hong Kong? Is it remote course? These are the questions that people ask in the mind, but it's very hard for them to translate into click, click, click and navigation about, around the website. So using the chatbot to like uh, slick in and then providing the like navigation as a first step easier for them to get access to information and explore more. This is something that is a brilliant way for like University of Adelaide has been built and they can see like six times RI in 12 months and they got like 50% of international recruitment growth, 82% uh, uh, of the awesome ranking, meaning that after they, the, the chatbot served in, uh, they, they think the chatbot is really helping them. So this is something very good uh, result. And after they connect, they, we want to engage them, right? They become your, 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 your students or in other industries, they become your, your customers. You want them to get, again, like getting the information much easier. And also we have another use case in the uh, University of uh, New York, State University of New York, that they deploy the chatbot for 1.3 million students. Again, if you look at having one people talking to one people is so tough. And let, let the robot do it, let the chatbot do it, right? So they can ask common question and they can ask FAQ question. Uh, they, they can also like asking question and then they don't give you the answer because I, I need to ask more. So the chatbot can be a conversational like guidance. Uh, if you ask me like the course, then I ask you like what is what's uh, your interest and 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 uh, what 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 was your preference, right? Um, uh, what course have you taken before? And guiding them through as a advisor now, not only FAQ, not every information, but now chatbot become advisor so that can provide you more like advices based on the question that they ask back to to the users, and also they can also like hand 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 holding with the back end system like PeopleSoft or HR, they can integrate with the back end to get in the particular personalized information and share back with the students after they log in. So this, this is something that the more advanced, uh, the journey for the chatbot to starting from FAQ going into more advisory role and also getting, connecting with different systems. And, and this is not stopping here, right? We want to empower them as well. So like this, uh, like university in uh, uh, Korea, they are, they are also interacting with uh, the backend system and also like trying to provide advice. When the student wants to do some research, they want to uh, at the, has a chatbot to chat whether I already have similar research done already. I don't want to repeat someone have, which has been done. And then they're providing you the article, they're providing you the guideline and the, the, the professor that's uh, very, very, very strong in this part. Uh, of the like research and also providing some indexing for your library. So you can see they are trying to not only the advisor, but also linking up with different system, providing you like different information from different like uh, assets from be it like library to be it like research uh, system, be it like uh, other information. And then you are moving the chapel in the next level, providing the, the, the uh, not, not the only the navigation and advisory, but also the um, Accessing to different systems uh, as a personal assistant. So this is packaging as a personal assistant because it's, it's it's knowing who you are, providing what you want, and at the right time. So this is something that uh, moving on uh, from in in university, and they got a award <clears throat> um, for <clears throat> having this uh, uh, chatbot for for the students, and they got the government award uh, uh, for this innovation. Um, so. Again, this is not ended here. So we are seeing all people like, like uh, the whole journey. Uh, they 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 graduate or they they taking some professional exam, uh, and also ETS is very famous um, like a uh, organization providing TOEFL and GRE, uh, like, uh, like organization. Which again, they are they also having problem with facing the um, COVID nineteen, and and I believe many of you may be attending some training or some certification uh and you 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 know how it works right you know you need to log into the the console in, in in before 50 minutes but you don't know what's going on so the best way is to like uh, serving them better giving them some guidance on, on a chatbot right uh telling them a piece be patient that the, the, the event will start rather than the student like 
need to open a website and browsing through like what what should I do right so having a chatbot again is a professional way to serving a professional people right so and um and, and again we can connect with the live agents to serving better and this one also like extending the journey to like integrating with uh Oracle uh, 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 CRM, which is Service Cloud, to provide the like incident. Like, let's say I, I hit some problem, right? So I, I talk to the chatbot, and chatbot will guide me to a, a human, and the human asks the same question. It's a very bad experience. So what happened is the chatbot carry through all the conversation to the human agent, and then agent will see all the conversation before. They don't repeat the same question and carry forward the conversation asked and provide the the, the service at the right point. So this is like the whole whole journey for chatbot that we have been seeing. And I, I think this is uh, giving you some idea like uh, the, the customer journey or the student journey uh, and how we can pack in different like 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 digital assistant like stages to serve them better. As long as you know the student or, or the, the, the user better, then you can providing them more advisory. So so this is something that we have been seeing the journey. And uh and we're seeing like lots of like cloud <coughs> journey, digital journey, and transforming into uh, a different way. So uh let me pass it to uh Mitash and I think he will probably going through more details of this journey uh with you and uh, with more like real life experience. Uh, and also how to implement it in the best practice, in the best way. Uh, so without further ado, let me um, invite Matthias from Infosys to like share with us more like details about their experience and also their expertise in digital assistant deployment as well as implementation. Thanks, Nelson. Um, that was a great amount of detail. So what we'll do now from here is uh, just try to show you what kind of implementations we've done with uh, certain customers and uh, how they have uh, got benefit from this so before i move before i share my screen i, I would just uh, pause here for a quick uh, survey or a poll uh, suman can you launch the poll please we'll keep it only open for another 10 or 12 seconds and then we'll close the poll this will be helpful for us to understand uh, you know the the perspective uh, in each of your organizations. So this is the second poll wherein we talk about, uh, you know, what kind of services uh, would you be generally interested in or because we want to automate the the query handling or we want to automate the experience. We don't want people to wait for, uh, you know, a long time before they can get answers to their queries. Yeah, let me uh, share my screen with you now. Jason, can you stop sharing so that I can share my screen? Great, thank you so much. So as a part of the digital transformation, you know, uh, what digital assistant can do in terms of uh, different areas. So it can help us to improve uh, customer experience. Uh, so you can have a chatbot which is completely customer facing or public facing. Uh, the other way is to also have the chatbot which is internal facing for employees because we also want our employees to have um, better uh, uh, basically interaction so let's say as, as an employee if i want to access uh, certain policies or what policies apply to me as per my designation or if i want to apply leaves if i want to uh, you know approve purchase orders or invoices so i can do all of these from the chatbot so that's more from the employee perspective the other way is to you know, um, how do we reduce our operational expenses? So we want to make sure that the centralized teams are not overloaded and they don't increase the uh, strength of the centralized teams. So that's how we can deploy the digital assistant that can do a lot of, uh, you know, automation in terms of uh, query handling as well as responding to different types of uh, FAQs. And uh, lastly, it helps us to better manage our uh, data internally and also uh, make sure that you know we get good amount of information uh, based on the queries or based on the interactions that come through digital assistant so moving on quickly um <clears throat> this is the basically shows an overview of uh, you know the capabilities of 
what a digital assistant can do in an environment. So considering you know different uh, backend applications, it can be Oracle applications or it can be non Oracle applications or completely custom applications. So you talk about you know people soft. Uh, it can be certain administration kind of um, applications. You have you know library related customer facing related and then third party systems. So these third party systems can be anything. They can be homegrown .NET or Java based kind of applications. It can be uh, you know any uh, student related application like banner. So this helps us to integrate with a lot of backend systems. And the good thing is uh, from a common chatbot, you can do a lot of transactions in all of these backend systems. And also you can get a lot of uh, reports out from there. So you can see in the middle we've uh, mentioned these are skills. We call them skills. Uh, basically what kind of interaction can we do with the backend applications? So you can, uh, you know, check the attendance fees reminders you can you know do a lot of other services get faqs whether it is related to the policies or it is related to the courses or you know the rosters of the teachers so you can do a lot of different activities from a common chatbot or from a common digital assistant so this helps us to reduce the learning curve because if there are you know multiple applications within the organization the user needs to learn how all these applications work and where to click to get what information so using a digital assistant it really helps you to reduce the learning curve uh, all you have to do is open up the digital assistant and start typing and the digital assistant is intelligent enough to help you get right information from the right backend application so this helps us to also increase customer satisfaction or employee satisfaction because they don't have to go through the learning curve of how different applications work in your ecosystem. And the good thing is, um, as Nelson had mentioned earlier, it is not important for us to install a separate application on our mobile phone. We can use the existing applications like WhatsApp or Slack or Teams or Messengers. So it can integrate with any channel. You know, one of the most interesting use cases that come to my mind is, uh, you know, one of the clients, they the top management was using iPhone and they did not want to uh, use any other software on top of iPhone. So we integrated the backend applications with Siri for the management reporting. So today they just open up their iPhone, say, hey, Siri, can you please get me the variance analysis for last three months? And it gets goes to the backend applications, gets uh, the data and can show it in a graphical or in number way to the to the stakeholders. So that's cool, right? I mean, using your native features of your phone, you can do all your management reporting. You can do all your transactions in different applications that you have in your ecosystem. So that's the level of uh, ease of use or uh, simplicity that we can get through digital assistant. So these are certain use cases. I would quickly want to talk about the use cases. So um, these are very very specific use cases so the first uh, column here talks about the business function related so these are you know very very specific use cases which are almost in all organizations like hr self service so as an as an employee i can access all the information or faqs or policy related documents uh, through the uh, uh, digital assistant and i don't have to interact or uh, email or do a phone call to any of the executive all these activities can be done through the chatbot similarly recruitment assistance self-service finance uh, you know creating invoices checking invoices status approving them similarly planning and budgeting related uh, uh, the chatbot management reporting even it help desk a lot of uh, organizations they use hp uh, you know service desk or uh, service now so different applications can be uh, there in the back end. But using this digital assistant, you can create uh, your tickets for IT. You can create uh, different uh, ways of interaction and uh, you can also do a lot of troubleshooting. So the chatbot can help you to troubleshoot a lot of different problems that you face in your day to day, uh, you know, from the IT perspective or from the finance or HR perspective. So you can see these are all business function related. Other are very, very specific to uh, different verticals. <clears throat> so it is healthcare, then patient appointment booking and follow up and getting the reports and everything. 
call center automation is one of the most important areas because it helps you to reduce the number of live agents that you have to keep on floor. So these call centers can be any call centers, right? It can be support centers or uh, call centers for the sales or services or even for IT uh, kind of call centers. So it helps you and we have integrated with call center systems and this helps us to reduce the overall call volumes as well because you know people don't want to go through the painful exercise of uh, you know selecting the right button on the IBR. It's better that they can open up the chat bot get their queries answered and then log off. So that's how easy it makes. Similarly, customer service or on the student side from the university perspective. So students and university interaction, uh, car rental assistant for, for the finance or for the uh, banking and insurance organizations, we can uh, deploy a digital assistant from that perspective. So it's pretty much, I would say, it pretty much covers a lot of different verticals and is very very powerful in nature to help us to you know uh, implement these kind of bots across different verticals and the last is public sector related so you know government uh, can deploy the chatbot on their website or through other channels and uh, interact with the um, locals for a lot of different services whether it is healthcare taxation or education Postal related or you know trade license related, so you can get all that exposed through the digital assistant. This is uh, more from the education bot perspective. So uh, Nelson has already covered a lot of areas, so I will not invest too much time here. I'll just move quickly uh, forward, talking about what kind of solutions we get. So you know a common chatbot can be used for the parents, for the students, for teachers, as well as for the admin staff. So you don't need to have different versions or different chatbots to manage. You can have the same chatbot doing a lot of different stuff and based on the roles and responsibilities of the end users, they will get the answers or they can use different features of the chatbot. And uh, we can also integrate it with a lot of machine learning solutions and OCR solutions. For example, I want to scan a student ID or the national ID and based on that, I want to fetch certain information. So I can do all that integrating with the OCR system or with RPA or even with uh, you know different uh, applications within the organization. So this helps us to cover almost all different areas of uh, the organization and automate as much as possible. And as a part of the implementation, we also get a lot of domain knowledge. We also get a lot of best practices or kind of use cases that you should start with uh that can be used internally within employees as well as external which is facing the customer so again we've we've got this fixed scope offering um, in terms of um, you know what kind of implementations we can do so we will share this with you so that you can see it and uh, we can discuss it later these are certain customers that we've got across the globe which are um again i would say some of them are public sector organizations some of them are private sector organizations from different verticals so just talking about one of the use cases here so ministry of education in saudi arabia so we were able to reduce the overall cost of operations down by 40 percent because uh, they used to get a lot of queries and a lot of calls so we were able to help them to reduce the number of calls for basic queries or for you know basic information because ministry of education gives out a lot of student related and uh, education related courses related information so they they wanted to have a mechanism wherein they can automate all these queries so using a chatbot uh, which is multilingual people can interact with this chatbot using arabic or english language and the system basically uh, really helps the end users or the students to get the right information in a very quick time frame so people students don't have to also wait um, you know for hours or for days to get a response to their queries this makes life easy for the end users. Lastly, this is a very quick, uh, I would say, uh, a video which talks about um, the interaction with the university. So this helps us, uh, you know, you can see as a part of the, uh, the university, university has exposed a lot of FAQs or a, a lot of, um, I would say, questions and answers on the chatbot. So, a basic you know guidance or counseling or even 
uh, checking what kind of courses can a person be eligible for so you know you can see the student is asking how can i study law and uh, if i want to do a particular course what is the requirement for uh, doing this particular course or uh, how can i get into this course what is the minimum criteria or requirement so it tells me all the details what is required and uh, based on that i can then decide and prepare how to apply for this course and fill up all the forms and details so it it completely automates these uh, students interaction with the university and uh, handles all the queries very quickly so at the back end the the chatbot is also very intelligent it helps the management also to understand what are the most important or most frequent queries that you are getting from the customers or from the end users similarly it also helps you to do analytics as to what are the questions that we have not covered so far how can we improve the customers experiences by adding those questions or by improving our responses so you have a very very detailed analysis which backs you um, in the chatbot and that helps you to do overall improvement in the in the chatbot reply and making it more personalized so i kind of you know wanted to quickly browse through and um, show you the sample use case and uh, i can leave it open for questions and answers now so you can type in the chat window if you have any questions or queries and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions so I, i've got a question here um, which talks about um, how easy is it to integrate with um, a non oracle backend system so as i said you know if you want to really integrate with uh, oracle or non oracle system it doesn't make a difference because it's it's a very very platform independent application so i can we, we've integrated with the call center systems which are non oracle we've integrated with his systems which are healthcare non oracle similarly we have integrated with student systems with finance backend systems so it completely uh, it is completely independent and agnostic of the back backend systems but what i would say is um, it it can help you to standardize and automate a lot of queries so you don't need to have different chatbots you can have a same chatbot talking to your uh, oracle system and your non oracle systems as well it also has the capability to talk to your on premise and cloud applications so it does not differentiate between on premise or cloud applications you can integrate with any applications i also have a uh, i also have a um, question from uh, one of the attendees talking about what are the best use cases that we have implemented in banks or in um, in insurance verticals so it's an interesting question because uh, you know when you interact so for example i'm i'm a customer for of a bank and let's say i want to know what is the eligibility for uh, getting a particular credit card or you know basically personalizing your responses so what are the right services that uh, can be offered to me as a customer so the bank can send notifications to me through the digital assistant saying that these are very personalized offer based on your usage or based on your behavior we have figured out that these are the best um, services or products that we can offer you so this makes the response or the interaction very personalized it's not a generic uh, website you know wherein i can go and browse through 100 different things which are not applicable to me so that's where chatbot makes it very personalized so it can suggest me insurance plans it can suggest me credit cards it can suggest me fixed deposits or loans based on my behavioral data so as i said it it also has machine learning and ai capability so this helps us to pick up right products and offer it to our customers so that way you can do it apart from that you know very basic faqs for example i don't know what is my withdrawal limit today right i don't have to pick up a phone and talk to uh, someone wait in the queue on ibr so i can just type on the chatbot what is my withdrawal limit so it understands me as a customer it and uh, i don't need to give more details apart from the basic authentication or uh, uh, multi factor authentication after that is done it will clearly tell me uh, you know that this is your limit this is your spending limit or uh, you know these are our partners wherein you can get cash back so i can 
get all information that I want using the chatbot. And this really uh, simplifies the overall experience from the banking side, similarly from the insurance side. So I would say these are certain use cases uh, wherein we have exposed the chatbot to the end users or customers. But when it comes to employee based, employee based chatbots can be delivered to any vertical, regardless of which vertical or which uh, domain you are working in. Uh, you know, everyone needs to apply for leaves. Everyone needs to know what are the policies, leave policies or, you know, uh, sick leaves or what kind of leaves are applicable to me. What is my uh, recent pay slip? Can I download it? So all of these can be done through the chatbot for uh, the internal employees. I have another question about the flexibility or possible customization. So, you know, as a part of implementation service, we do have standard packages like self service uh, for the employees. So we do have those packages wherein we have pre built skills available and we can deliver those as a part of packages. But let's say if you want to have a very custom use case, let's say you want to book vehicle for your employees so that they can go to airport or they can, you know, travel to different places, for example. Uh, similarly, if you want to uh, do a custom calculator for your customers in terms of what is their eligibility for loan, what is the um, you know interest rates that you can offer them which are personalized. So there are custom use cases that we can very quickly implement on the chatbot. So it's a very, very flexible tool. I can pick up the use case that I want and uh, we can implement that apart from the standard packages which are available. There is one more question about uh, the implementation time frame. How much time does it take generally? So I would say it depends on the number of use cases that you want to pick up at any point in time. For example, if you want to pick up self-service HR, which is for internal employees, also you want to uh, expose the chatbot, uh, FAQ related chatbot to your uh, customers. So those are different types of use cases. So the implementation time frame will depend on that. But what I would say is it doesn't go in months, so you have to count in weeks. So if it is an FAQ chatbot for your uh, website, uh, so basically picking up all the FAQs from your website and automating it on a chatbot. So if you have to do that, for example, it can take maximum three or four weeks, which includes everything, you know, end user training, plus uh, making sure that the chatbot is well tested. So all the phases included, it will extend maximum up to three to four weeks. So that is the time, type of time frame that uh, you look at. So implementation is very effective and very fast for these kind of solutions. Do we have any other questions? So we'll just take uh, one last question. Uh, so we have a question here about, um, you know, how do we integrate with the backend applications? So there are obviously there are multiple applications, uh, different types of applications within the ecosystem. So how do we integrate with them? So there are multiple ways how you can integrate with uh, your backend systems, but the easiest way, uh, what I would say is using APIs. So if your application has APIs which are exposed, uh, we can easily consume APIs in the chatbot and um, we can interact with the backend applications to create transactions, to get reports or reporting data, or to also uh, you know, just get uh, the FAQs. So the chatbot is again intelligent, right? So you do not need to frame your sentence exactly in a robotic manner. Let's say if I want to apply a leave, I can, I can just speak on the phone saying that, okay, uh, hey, uh, digital assistant, can you please apply a leave for next Thursday? I don't need to say apply a full day leave on this date. I don't need to say all that. I just need to say in a normal English language, in a natural language. So that is the advantage. You, know, you don't need to remember commands. You don't need to remember uh, any specific codes. So you just have to speak as if you're speaking to your uh, you know, actual assistant. So the way I said, you know, can you please apply a leave for next Thursday? and it will go back into the system it will apply the leave it, it understands what next thursday means you know that that's the level of uh, you know simplicity that i'm trying to say similarly i can say uh, can you please show me what are the pending invoices for approval so it will go back into the system get all the pending invoices for you you can see them and say approve all or approve only the first two or last two that way you know it can easily do all your activities as if you are actually talking to a a real assistant so that's that's how uh, the machine learning and ai features are embedded within the application 
which makes life easy for the end users. They don't have to remember codes. So integrating with any of these backend systems can be done through simple API calls. And um, you know, you don't need to manage or maintain different vocabularies. The system understands whether you want to say leave or if you say I am sick, I won't be able to come to office on Thursday. So it understands what your meaning is, right? What do you try to say? So that way you don't have to hard code things. It, it understands it has a NLP, which is called natural language processing, which uh, clearly means that, uh, you know, whenever you say a sentence, it breaks it down into sentiments. It breaks it down into different types of meanings and then takes action based on uh, the meaning of the sentence. So that way, you know, these are certain advanced features which are built into the application. So you don't need to, you know, reinvent the wheel. These are features which are available off the shelf with Oracle. So I think we are on top of the hour and um, I would not want to uh, delay this. I don't want to take much of your time. So uh, please, please feel free to contact us in terms of um, if you want to do a quick POC or if you want to see a use case which can be applicable to your organization. So we will be more than happy to do that assessment for free of cost and we'll be happy to engage with you and your organization to see how we can utilize digital assistant within your organization to make it more efficient and you know have smoother interactions within employees as well as with your customers so please feel free to contact us and uh, we will we will uh, do a detailed engagement thank you so much uh, have a good day bye